and Zaria is here on this here Late Late Show, you lucky devils. Hank, thanks for being here. Uh, you're joining us from New York City. How does it feel there? Do, do things feel like they're getting back to normal? Yeah, things are slowly coming back to life, like a percent or two each day more. And I can say that I definitely prefer uh, coming out of a pandemic than going into one. I can report that uh, with yes. a lot of assurance. It would be weird if you were like, oh, I really loved that two-week moment when we went into it. You know, harvesting <laughs> toilet paper and tinned food. Yeah, and the existential panic attacks every 15 minutes. They, oh, I'm really still miss. having them, but they just come daily now. I've just got used to them. <laughs> they're, they're, as, yeah. they're as present as my coffee, and I'm starting to worry the two might be linked. Um, <laughs> now, Hank, we've got a video here of you taking a walk in Central Park. Um, yeah, boy. I've yeah. never really seen anything like this. Talk us through it. Uh, take a look at this. What's happening here? Yeah, there's me with my mask. It was before the mask mandate was lifted. And there, if you see my backpack, you look, if you get a little closer there, you zoom in there, it's, yeah, there's my kitty. There's Wilson the cat. We took him for a walk outside there. What? Look, I want to just go. This is my wife's fault. She's turned me into a crazy cat person, okay? I had nothing to do with it. I just, she threw the backpack on me and I obey orders, you know what I'm I saying? I mean, can we get a freeze frame of the cat's face? It looks like me on the way to the gym. Look at that. <laughs> just so sat yeah. going, I don't want to do this. I, know, I don't it's like, want to be here. Yeah. <laughs> did, he, did, he, did he like being in there? I don't know, I suppose. I mean, he, uh, look at him. He seems a little grumpy about it. But my wife got a big kick out of it, and that's the important thing. You know? uh, now, Hank, you've had such a, a phenomenally varied career. So much of your work I'm a huge fan of, from, you know, The Birdcage to Mad About You to, to Brockmire, which I, I think is arguably one of the most underrated comedies of the last ten years. I love it so much. Um, and then, obviously, all your voice work on The Simpsons... There's so many projects that people know you from. What's it like walking around New York like you were then? What do people talk to you about most on the streets? Well, I get, I get stopped a lot, but maybe because I'm a character actor, I've done all that, people know they know me, but they don't know from where. And it's not even always show business or movies or TV. They'll, um, like, I've been asked if I've gone to every college in the country, for example. <laughs> Well, the, my favorite one was I was in an, eleva in an elevator. A guy gets in the elevator and gives me one of these, which I'm sure you've gotten, right? The the, the joyous point, like, hey, like yeah. that, you know. And I was like, hey, hi, how you doing? And he's like, you're in the upholstery cleaning business. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, the guy thought I cleaned his couch, I suppose, but. He seems so delighted that I guess whoever cleaned the guy's curtains did a fantastic job. Because yeah, so happy to that's the way to do it. If anyone says to me, as they often do, they go, I know, you, they go, you're... And I immediately now just go, Brad Pitt, nice to meet you. I, I, I use George Clooney. Yeah, I, that's the one. Yeah. I say, I'm George Clooney, I just, I look terrible in person. That's yeah. I mean. And then, and then they have a moment where they think you might, and they go, no, you're not. Exactly. You're Jimmy Kimmel. And I go, yeah. <laughs> um, now, Hank, the Friends reunion is coming up next week, and you're obviously a, a big guest star on Friends, but I didn't know this. You auditioned originally to play Joey on the show. Yeah, not yet, twice. Twice. One time in my career, I, I ever, uh, you know, I read that script, and many of us, Matthew Perry is actually a very dear friend of mine. And so we all read the script and, and knew it was going to... We didn't know it was going to be the huge phenomenon it turned into, but we knew it was great. And uh, so we were all desperate to be in it. And I auditioned for Joey and didn't get it. Uh, and I was like, no, I, I, it, I have to go back. I have to try again. So I, 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 I bowled my way back in for a second time, and they were very kind and watched my audition and then, and then threw me out. Um, and a spoiler alert, I didn't get the role of Joey. Uh, <laughs> But uh, but then they were kind enough to have me back as David, the, the scientist guy. Yes. Who went out with me, and that, that was fun. It's a brilliant, a brilliant character. I mean, that's the amazing thing about the cast of that show, is once you've seen that show, you really just can't imagine anybody else in those roles at all. It was, like, maybe the most perfect piece of casting in television. I don't know. I used to imagine myself as Joey quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Now, 
Hank, uh, you're such an incredible mimic, and over the past few weeks, which, you know, have felt like years, we've talked a lot about um, <laughs> accents in the studio. I'm interested to know, what's Hank Azaria's English accent like? Well, it's easier to do a bit of a Cockney accent. I don't yeah. know why. It's sort of easier to reach. Yours is a bit... I'm listening now. Well, I know you're projecting, and so it's a bit... It's a bit loud, isn't it, James? <laughs> It's, English folks aren't. It's too yeah. loud. It's too loud, and I, I remind if myself you of mind. this before every show, and it doesn't seem to soften. Yeah. Are you like this at home? Do you come home and say, "Honey, I'm home." I do. And I'm quite loud. Yes. Yes. What's for dinner? Or I go, "I'm going." To, she goes, "Where are you going?" I say, "To the bathroom," and then I look straight in her eyes and go, "We'll be right back." <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Yes. Well, you know, dial it down a bit. I think, I'll but you know, you it's do. your show. Do what you like. Yeah. All right. I'll be, I'll be really low energy on this next bit. Let's talk about the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> All right. Now pick it back up. It's depressing. Jim Brockmire right? podcast is based on a character from your sitcom Brockmire. Uh, Tell us all. No, juice it back up. Juice it back up. I was wrong to. to, to, to no, let's talk off. about the, the the podcast, the Jim Brockmire podcast. It's obviously based on your character from the sitcom uh, Brockmire. I, explain the premise. Well, similarly, this is the Jim Brackmeyer voice. This is the uh, the generic baseball announcer voice of the 1970s that I grew up listening to, and I got a little morbidly fascinated. It's just, why do all these guys talk this way? And do they talk this way all the time? Much like I asked you if you go home and speak this way. I wondered if these guys did. Do they sound like this when they say dirty talking during sex as well? <laughs> If they're completely wasted out of their minds, do they still sound like this? And um, I noticed that these guys could say whatever they like as long as they gave the count afterwards. Like if they uh, said, "Oh, I spent most of last night with, uh, well, a couple of a uh, couple of hookers, about an eight ball of cocaine as Johnson swings and misses a freaking ball." Of and uh, so that sort of became the <laughs> genesis of a short we did at Funny or Die, and we. Turned it into a television show, which you can binge all four seasons on Hulu if you like. Yeah. Uh, right now, so, and we, we just got voted. May I say, uh, one of the top fifty sitcoms of all time by Rolling Stone magazine, number forty-two. <laughs> See, I think you, you're, you're selling yourself short there, Hank. You've gone top fifty. I'd go. I would go straight in in the top forty-two. <laughs> I just say we're the top four. We're in the top forty-two shows. Forget the eight. Don't carry that <laughs> dead weight, um, Hank. Exactly right. I got to tell you that the, the podcast is so brilliant. It's so entertaining. As are you. The Jim Brockmire podcast is available right now wherever you get your podcasts. And all four seasons of Brockmire, the forty-second best show in the world, <laughs> according to Rolling Stone, <laughs> is streaming right now on Hulu. Stick around. Hank Azario is going to be here when we come back.